You say the city is thriving. It's never been better. That it's none of our business. Don't be so naive, you insist. The skyscrapers are scratching the sun. New roads paved into meadows. High mortality rates, like measuring morality with a thumb. Press it to the wall and count the creases. Quantify pain from zero to ten. Zero. I have nothing to say to you. My four is your eight. My arm is on fire. It started before I was born. Look, the city is growing. This isn't complex or subjective. The alarming signal is moderately unbearable. I'm exhausted too. The fear of pain is greater than the fear of death, and I'm confused about God. My mind is dull, clouded with burden. The fear of pain is greater than the fear of knowledge. God moved into that building. He lives on the 12th floor. He saw the city ablaze and yelled, children, behind you. The boy's face hit the cold stone pavement near a holy site. When prophets walk on this land, everything is holy. My thumb is stuck on plaster. My pain now a two. My two is your eight. I'm sorry we don't feel the same way about this, but God is knocking on my door and he needs sugar. It's early and we're going into the great nothingness, the tender throbbing, shooting in my legs, dull, cutting, a tight tingle. There are many languages for this, but the truth is what is mild to one person may be terrible to another. Dear Mahmoud, I often feel like a hostage confined in my own history. The world is a dark room and I'm chained to the wall. My body, pressed against the cold brick, starts to lose trace of itself. I become darkness. Every time I fight it, the heavy metal pushes into me, dictates every move and gesture. My facial expressions are invisible in this room, and you can't see my confusion, just as I cannot see your sympathy. But why should you have sympathy for me? I have done you wrong, and now I'm stuck. Mahmoud, it's stifling in here. I can barely breathe. The air is thick, and I can taste it. My lips feel the dampness, the humidity. I taste the smell of excrement and blood. Others still linger here, even if I don't see them. And if I let my imagine go there, I hear them. I hear the sound of the mouth opening the second before it lets out a... Feel the sound of smugness, of satisfaction in the corner. I feel their eyes on me. My thighs attempt to remain stable my feet covered in urine, the cuts on my toes that burn and burn. I try to think of something else, but a voice yells, asks me to confess. I can only commit to my birth, to encountering life at a certain point in time. I'm not responsible for this, and yet I've been asked to perform my own history. I raise a hand and gesture to crease the lines according to their design. I can almost feel this hand in my stomach, pressing through my intestines, pushing up towards my throat, opening in my mouth so that my, my lips move and say, I did it. It was me. The hand remains in my throat, mimicking their discourse. I did it, I say. It was me. They kick me, push me, hit, beat, burn. My skin can't feel it. I can't feel it. It's so hot in here. I cannot distinguish between sweat and tears. I am their amnesia, the blind spot of the mid-century, the area that was there but cannot be seen. It's really just a matter of diverting your gaze. I'm playing that part, the heavy metal confined on a wrist, sinking into the skin, cold and cumbersome. My body pressed, toyed with. I'm just a pack of limbs. Something entered here. It hurts. I can't tell them to stop because they have covered my mouth. This is the story I could have told you had you listened. 
I was only born on that day. Life, initially, is about unintention. Possibility is far more frightening than impossibility. I am imprisoned here because of that fear. My freedom terrifies you. And so you would do whatever you can to control my movement. When people do not want to see something, they get mad at the one who shows them. They kill the messenger. Mahmoud, these are the moments when I want to crawl into you and sit on your lap or lay in your belly so you could bathe me.